that hyphy test, man. All y'all that need to uh, boost your testosterone, want some bigger muscles, more energy, libido strong, this is it, man. I've been working on this for 10 years. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemartates.com. Today we're gonna to be checking out new supplements to get huge by Cali Muscle. This apparently is a 10 year in the making fucking test booster. This guy has been perfecting the formula, you know, fiddling with shit in the fucking chemistry lab and uh, trying to get this thing absolutely dialed in to finally release to the public 10 years later. So let's hear what he has to say about it. Yes, man, all y'all did. Need to uh, boost your testosterone, want some bigger muscles, more energy, libido strong. This is it, man. I've been working on this for 10 years. It's been working on this for 10 years. You want bigger muscle, better libido, feel fucking better overall. Get this shit, apparently. This is my secret stack. Be quiet. It's a fucking secret. <clears throat> we got a hyphy or organ. This to clean out your insides. A lot of people have been eating a lot of bad food all in life. So you want your insides healthy. You want them strong. You want it new, like new, like you was a newborn baby. That's how you want your insides. So this go help clean you out. If you've been eating a lot of fast food and you got a little, people don't realize it. Are clean me out like what? It's a laxative? Like, please explain further because that doesn't sound too appealing. You just get clogged. So we go clean you out with that hypey organ. Right? Jeez. Like the claims are pretty fucking out there, dude. Like, first of all, gain more muscle with the test booster. 10 years in the making. Now we're into the organ support and we're going to clean your fucking arteries out, bro. Like, those are some fucking bold claims, dude. Yeah, man. Sound like I'm saying Oregon. Oregon. Don't be jealous, man. Uh, make sure you pick yours up. Right. No, I told you. I'm a boy. You do. <laughs> okay, so let's get into the actual formula. So this is by Hyphy Life, presumably. Supplements and merch by Cali Muscle. All right, so we have a Hyphy Mud, Hyphy Test. Hyphy Mud is the revolutionary new way to maximize your energy. Oh, shit. Raise your testosterone to maximum muscle growth. And I feel like I'm watching a fucking movie preview. Perform at your highest level with Hyphy Test. Increase your focus to outperform the competition with Hyphy Brain. Clean your insides to function properly with Hyphy Organ. Clean your insides with Hyphy Organ. Ah, oh, man. It's like the most professional, like, movie quality announcer voice. And then he's just like, clean your insides. That sounds good. All right, so let's get to HyphyLife.com and see what's good. We go to uh, Shop Sups presumably, and we go down to <laughs> This is how each bottle is made, if you did not know. Be careful when you open it, as you may indeed get electrocuted. So anyways, uh, I'm sure people would want to hear the Hyphy Mud review, but I already kind of dedicated this video to doing Hyphy Test. It's a $70 10-year-in-the-making product. So I'm like, okay, I'm expecting big fucking things from this. So 60 capsules in it, and it has 90, 90 cap, what the fuck? Is it 60 capsules or 90 capsules? It says on the bottle 90, but at the top of the page it says 60. So I'm not really sure. Um, all right, the label, where is the label? Subscription details, subscribe, one-time purchase. Uh, no, there's no carousel of images. Um, level up, hyphy test. Where the fuck is the label? <laughs> hyphy test, you may not know it, but as early as age 30, men's test level starts to decline. Seriously, this is no joking matter. Your test is what makes men, men. Declining test means weaker muscles and bones, lack of drive, weight gain, and overall poor performance in and out of the gym. Hyphy test will get your test levels up to where they should be. 
No blends, no filler, no junk, just test. We use the best ingredients and the doses needed to get your testosterone production revved up like a race car. So if you're ready to start feeling good and looking good, then it's time to take hyphy test and live that hyphy life. What the fuck is this not the exact same, same thing I just read? They have like the same paragraph twice, except this time it's Cali doing a fucking muscle up. Okay, so th is this the breakdown? Like, where's the fucking label, dude? No label. All right, I guess I'm just going on up this, like in a little tiny fucking font. It's like the fine print, Tribulus Terrestris, a long time proven testosterone booster and aphrodisiac, zinc and magnesium, minerals crucial for healthy testosterone levels. Chrysin, an effective aromatase inhibitor that helps keep estrogen levels down. Horny goat weed and long jack, also known as Tomcat Alley, natural herbs used to assist in libido as well as stamina. Hawthorne and saw palmetto used for healthy prostate and cardiovascular system. Cissus quadrangularis keeps cortisol levels down and testosterone levels up. All right, so I have no fucking clue what the dose is. I have no clue what the standardizations are. I have no clue about any, I don't even know how many fucking capsules are in it, bro. It says 60 caps right here, prominently featured, but then the bottle says 90. So I don't really know, like how much can I really comment on this 10 year in the making product when he doesn't even have the fucking correct amount of capsules on the bottle, nor a picture of the label, nor dosage breakdowns, nor standardization breakdowns. So um, as far as like my general stance on test boosters is frankly, I think the majority of them function through a modality that is not necessarily a process in which I want to be chronically maintaining. Like basically your testosterone functions through a feedback system. It's called your HPTA or your HPGA, hypothalamus pituitary testicular axis. And everything is regulated through androgen receptor activation, estrogen receptor activation, progesterone receptor activation, et cetera, feedback to your brain basically telling you you have an adequate amount of hormone signaling and you do not need to produce or you do need to produce luteinizing hormone. Well, after uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone goes down to your pituitary, which then tells your pituitary to spit out enough luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone to go down to your testes and actually cause uh, um, testosterone production, intratesticular testosterone production, and actually uh, have like the maturation and production of your real actual sperm and you know encourage fertility and whatnot so obviously if you have something that is like as you're probably familiar as if you bodybuild or know anything about bodybuilding pharmacology if you inhibit aromatase or use a serum or whatever these are things that are commonly used in a post psychotherapy aspect to encourage the production of testosterone and kind of kick your hpta up and kind of get things going faster when otherwise there may be suppression because you may have lingering estrogen receptor feedback or androgen receptor feedback causing your HPTA to be shut down, thus making you like, you know, hypogonadal whilst you're clearing the exogenous steroids out of your system or SARMs or whatever it is you're using. So that's where deploying a selective estrogen receptor modulator or an aromatase inhibitor can come into play because if you're blocking estrogen receptor activation, or you're inhibiting the amount of aro aromatization that can happen, hence less estrogen being produced, hence less estrogen receptor activation, that ultimately is going to lead to less feedback to your hypothalamus, pituitary, gonadal axis, consequently telling your brain, we don't have enough estrogen, so we need to make more testosterone to get an adequate amount of estrogen. So you're basically tricking your body through saying we're like deprived of fucking hormones. So does this practice work? Does it increase testosterone? Yes. Is it something that I like to do on a long-term basis? Not necessarily, to be honest. However, when it comes to some of these supplements, how potently are they doing that? Is it going to be problematic? Like, for example, if you're using an aromatase inhibitor long-term, what can you expect besides higher test levels? Well, cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration, a lot of things that are going to be bad as a result of inhibiting aromatase. In addition to that, if you're using a CIRM, what about a CIRM instead of that? Something that selectively occupies the estrogen receptor well, you can expect fucking, you know, like ocular damage potentially. They look at these side effects of Novidex used chronically. So are these things I want to be using in like herb format, all but slightly weaker? It can, it's hard to say, man, because the demand is definitely there for this shit to a point where, you know, like I've definitely tinkered it in my head with the idea of coming out with something that actually works simply because there's a lot of demand and people ask for it. However, it's not necessarily a product I like highly encourage people to use because I'm a bit less like aware 
of how the estrogen receptor manipulation slash aromatase inhibition component is going to affect you long term. So I can say like this shit will work on paper. You can increase your test 100%. However, I don't know if this is going to be a long lived effect and if it's going to be healthy long term chronically. So for example, I've seen some of the uh, Andrew Huberman um, recent podcast where he's talked about um, boosting testosterone with natural means and um, you know, it's definitely peaked, re-peaked my interest in a subject which I otherwise essentially wrote off, not because they don't work, but in practical application, like, do they actually have performance enhancing effects that are worth deploying? Like, it seems like there's definitely a demand there, which has made me sort of, you know, revisit the idea of it. But again, I think you need to understand the mechanism of action of this stuff before you jump into it. It's not just about taking your long jack slash Tomcat LE with your fucking tribulus, with your saw palmetto, with your fucking christen and just being like, oh, it just increases tests and that's the only thing it does. You have to be aware of what it's doing too. So you're actually weighing out the ROI on it because there is not zero risk. We don't actually know necessarily what is going to happen. So like ultimately there are a lot of supplements that are you know speculative or have like an ROI on it where you have to weigh the risks or reward when you're using like high amounts of stimulants when you're using whatever. You know, you're not 100, like there's some sort of trade-off to be had. It's not necessarily like the healthiest thing or is the most like biologically consistent thing to achieve some ergogenic enhancement practice. Um, so just be aware of that before you use this shit. But I will kind of comment on will this work? Well, it depends on the dosage used and the standardization. Like for example, with Tribulus, um, industry standard could be um, something as weak as like a 30, a 40%, you know, standardization to sap on ends, which is like typically what you're going to be looking for in the breakdown is what is the standardization to sap on ends. Now you're probably wondering what the fuck that is. Like ultimately these things are all like raw ingredients and they're being standardized for some sort of active, like pharmacologic component of them. And in Tribulus, that is the main thing we are seeking is the sap on ends part and having a standardization. First of all, having a dosage that's useful. You now, obviously the first thing you're going to look for. And then secondarily to that in the supplement breakdown, does it show the standardization and is it up to snuff? Like personally, I would want to see at least like a 50% for a Tribulus terrestris extract as far as breaking down the um, zinc and magnesium. Now, are these at adequate dosages? Is the zinc and magnesium in a format that is otherwise well tolerated. Is it a bis bisglycinate? Is it a fucking, you know, magnesium l 3 -inate? Is it a magnesium citrate? Is it a mag, what is the magnesium and zinc format? Because that's going to depend how well it's tolerated on your digestive system and how well it works, how bioavailable it is. Is it just going to cause gastric distress? Is it just gonna be pissed out? Like, what is it gonna do? Personally, I prefer zinc and magnesium um, glycinate or bisglycinate, and that is what we put in Gorilla Dream for our like zinc magnesium B6 component. But again, what are the dosages used? What's the format? Is it some cheap fucking zinc and magnesium? I don't know. Chrysin, effective aromatase inhibitor that keeps estrogen levels down. Am I a fan of aromatase inhibitors? No, I'm fucking not, to be honest. Are they useful in certain like niche contexts? Sure. However, is this something you want to be using chronically long term? Probably not, personally. Like, I think. A CIRM is a lot more favorable in that it's not indiscriminately inhibiting an enzyme that is needs to be expressed in your brain, your heart, your fucking bones, all effectively in order to create like intra tissue fucking estrogen levels. So no, I'm not a big fan of the aromatase inhibitor component. Like when people put arimistain in a test booster and then talk about like, look how effective it is on paper. It's like, yeah, well, you're fucking killing your brain and heart to get that bump in test. Is that really worth it? Maybe not. Horny goat weed and long jack. Does horny goat weed work anecdotally? Um, yeah, it seems to be useful in a libido slash, I don't know, like blood flow context, I guess. As far as the standardization you want to look for, um, I would be looking for a 10% Icarins standardization. You know, the industry standard can be as low as 1%. So you can imagine, even if you have the efficacious dose in a product, if the actual pharmacologic component of the raw like thing that you're trying to extract something from is featured in an efficacious dose, but the standardization to the actually like elements of it you're trying to pull out of it is weak. You're not actually getting the effect that you're seeking and you're getting some cheap like inflated bullshit label. So you want to be looking for, personally, I would want to see a 10% Icarins concentration or standardization, but I have no idea what his is um, for the horny goat weed component. As far as the Tomcat Ali slash Longjack, 
you know, it seems to function as a mild selective estrogen receptor modulator. Is this something you want to be using long term? I don't know how bad it's going to be with your eyes. You know, that's just speculative. So I would just be aware of that when you look at things like the long term effects of Novadex, the long term effects of Roloxifene. Again, these are like designed drugs to actually have targeted action selectively at estrogen receptors. With Long Jack, is it just broad spectrum estrogen receptor modulation like systemically or what is it exactly doing? Like it, it seems to work in practical application for testosterone. However, is it inhibiting estrogen receptor activation to some extent that's going to be problematic in like an ocular aspect down the line? I don't know for sure, but I would just be wary of that. But I would favor something like a Tomcat Alley much over an aromatase inhibitor like a Rimistane, Crisin, or any of this kind of shit. And as far as the long jack standardization I would be looking for, personally, I would be looking for something like a 200 to 1 extract. Um, as far as I know, the industry standard is like 100 to 1 or even worse than that um, from what I've seen. Um, Hawthorne saw Palmetto. Um, Hawthorne, you know, I don't even know if it's really worth commenting on because it doesn't really have anything to do with um, test levels as far as I know. Saw Palmetto, a very weak 5-alpha reductase inhibitor that honestly I think you might as well be using finasteride if you're going to be going that route or a low dose of it. Um, you know, you can titrate it or manipulate it as needed based on your own tolerability of 5-AR blockade. But saw Palmetto is like a more unpredictable 5AR inhibitor that you otherwise have to dose far higher and you don't really know what else it's doing in the body. Whereas a targeted 5AR inhibitor like a finasteride, you actually understand exactly what's happening, the actual output and increase in testosterone and estrogen as a result of it, and how much 5AR blockade you're actually getting for that exact dose and when it's going to work its way out of your system, how it's going to affect you, blah, blah, blah. There's actually fucking hordes of clinical studies to support the efficacy of it and the side effect profile is very well understood whereas saw palmetto no one really knows what to expect you just take like a few hundred milligrams of it and you just like hope it somehow equates to like a more side effect free version of like a weak finasteride when in reality you could just like modulate your finasteride dose in my opinion and get selective isoform inhibition too not you know broad spectrum the isoforms that are responsible for the production of each type of five alpha reductase because there is a type one a type two a type three and saw palmetto, it's not like it's targeted action like a finasteride is. Um, Cissus quadrangularis um, keeps cortisol levels down, testosterone levels up. Frankly, I don't even know what the fuck this is. So I am going to Google it quickly and see exactly what it is. Veld grape. Never fucking heard of it in my life, to be honest. And I think I would have heard of it by now if it was actually useful. Like to me, it sounds like what it's trying to... Popular as a joint aid for athletes with preliminary evidence supporting this property of cysis. Um, is there any evidence of it producing testosterone increases? No, like to be honest, it sounds like you would be better off if you're trying to keep cortisol down and test, test levels up. I think you would be better off with something like an ashwagandha in place of that personally. Um, so anyways, that's my stance on hyphy test. Frankly, if there's no breakdown of it, you have no idea what the fuck you're putting in your body, no idea the dosages, no idea the standardizations. It surely didn't take this guy fucking 10 years to make it. I would be wary until he puts a label up at least. So that's my stance on it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What are your thoughts on test boosters in general? Is this something I should be doing with Gorilla Mind or no? Is it worth doing? You know, like ultimately, I don't just produce shit that I would use personally. If there's enough demand there, you know, I'll go to the drawing board and formulate something that I think is reasonable. However, I'm not a big fan of things like aromatase inhibitors and fucking indiscriminately inhibiting the production of estrogen just to boost my test on paper when I might otherwise be causing some downstream issues, you know, cumulatively down the line with chronic exposure. So there's some ingredients in this I would definitely avoid. So let me know what you think. Uh, maybe that's something I pursue in the future if there's enough demand, but that is my overall stance on this product. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. Much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoredates. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, TRT Clinic. I'll tell medicine from the comfort of your own home. Get high quality oversight from doctors who actually understand how to interpret biomarkers and diagnostics as well as interpret things like your endocrine parameters, testosterone, estrogen, SHPG, DHT, et cetera, and how to modulate them accordingly based on your own individual imbalances or deficiencies, whether that is using dietary manipulation, supplementation, or pharmacology, if warranted. We do it all return key, and I do not know any other clinic that is 
producing the high quality information that we are in educating our patients in the way we do. Uh, I'm sure, you know, there are some out there, but I mean, in general, the kind of like cookie cutter practices I see with a lot of clinics, like that is what we try to steer clear of. And we pride ourselves on the education and information we present to our clients rather than just the cookie cutter scripts of TRT, HCG, and an asterisk, all that most other clinics will do. So anyways, if you want to check that out, it is video description below, as well as Gorilla Mind, Nootropic Formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas, a design myself from scratch, recommended diet model for gaining muscle and sports performance and maximizing testosterone production. Make sure your diet is fucking on point before you use something like a test booster or a Go on TRT haphazardly, as well as anything else I'm associated with, it is all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.